All you have to do is write one true sentence, the truest sentence that you know. Ernest Hemingway was an icon of the 20th century and a Nobel Prize winner for literacy and a war hero. He was a traveller and a lover of bullfighting. Then he grew older and became a cat person. His writing style is very distinctive. He was once an editor for the Kansas City Star, and he adopted their writing guidelines. Use short sentences, use short first paragraphs, use vigorous English, be positive, not negative. He frequently used the word and instead of a comma. He wrote in simple sentences and invented the iceberg theory. The theory is about omitting unnecessary writing and scenes and getting the most from the least. In the spirit of Hemingway's style, I have tried to emulate his manner in the script for this biography. He was a young boy who lived with his family in the early 1900s in Oak Park, Illinois, and he was taught the cello by his mother. At school, he edited the yearbook and the newsletter and competed in many sports. His writing skill led to his first job as a cub reporter for the Kansas City Star. In 1917, his poor eyesight prevented him from joining the army, so he became a Red Cross ambulance driver. He was sent to the Italian front and here he would prove his bravery and character. Once he went to the canteen and bought chocolates and cigarettes for those on the front lines. He returned and unexpected mortar fire caused him serious injury. Injury did not stop him from helping soldiers to safety. For his efforts he was awarded the Italian War Merit Cross at the age of 18. It was while he recuperated in hospital that he fell in love with Red Cross nurse Agnes von Kurowski. Hemingway returned home in January 1919 and waited for Agnes to follow him so they could marry. March delivered a letter in which Agnes told of her engagement to an Italian officer. The bloody stains of war are permanent on the mind. Hemingway was not yet 20 and had endured fears his family would never understand. The maturity he gained during service influenced the themes of his writing and much of his writing described war and its aftermath. Michigan's Upper Peninsula was where he went camping with friends in 1919 September. His inspiration was sparked and he composed the short story Big Two-Hearted River, where the protagonist Nick Adams heads out to the country after returning from war. It was a year past and he was living in Chicago with a roommate. His roommate had a sister and his sister had a friend, called Hadley Richardson. Like Agnes, Hadley was much older than Hemingway and she was eight years his senior. The two fell in love and within months they were married and together they travelled to Europe. The Toronto Star hired Hemingway to be a foreign correspondent and the newlyweds went to Paris. Paris of the 20s, and a Folle, was made of artists and interesting people. Writers and artists would gather at cafes and so Paris became a cafe society. Salon gatherings allowed people of interest to come together for conversation. It was a time of much discussion and much artistic exploration. It was here Hemingway befriended Gertrude Stein. Stein was a pillar for the modernist movement in Paris and Hemingway attended many of her salons, where he met famous painters such as Pablo Picasso. He also became friends with James Joyce, and they would often venture on alcoholic sprees. It only took Hemingway 20 months in Paris to journal 88 stories for the Toronto Star. In September of 1923, he and his wife returned to Toronto and their son John Hemingway was born. Hemingway's first book was Three Stories and Ten Poems. It was published while he was away from Paris. The family returned to Paris where Hemingway became close friends with F. Scott Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald published The Great Gatsby, and Hemingway was impressed by the novel. He was inspired to write a novel of his own. Fitzgerald's wife, Zelda, expressed suspicions of a love affair between the two men, despite lack of evidence. This caused problems in her relationship with Fitzgerald. Pamplona, Spain, 1923. The San Vermin Festival. The life and death nature of bullfighting appealed to Hemingway's masculine personality. He fell in love with the sport. In the years following, he returned to Pamplona and watched the running of the bulls. It was here he was given the nickname Papa. His first trip to Pamplona inspired The Sun Also Rises. He wrote the first draft in eight weeks. While revising the manuscript, he began an affair with journalist Pauline Pfeiffer. Hadley gave Hemingway 100 days to choose between her and Pfeiffer. He chose Pfeiffer. With his new wife, he returned to Paris and became a Catholic. He published a short story called Fifty Grand in a collection of short stories called Men Without Women. Cosmopolitan editor-in-chief Ray Long proclaimed it one of the best short stories that ever came to my hands. Before returning to America in 1928 with Pauline, who was pregnant, Hemingway had an accident which left him with a severe and permanent forehead scar. He mistaked a skylight for a toilet chain. 
He pulled the skylight down on his head. Patrick Hemingway was born in Kansas City in 1928. Pauline endured a difficult delivery. Hemingway's father was struggling. He sent a letter to his father, Clarence, telling him not to worry about financial difficulties. The letter arrived minutes after Clarence committed suicide. Hemingway was able to sympathise with Hadley. Her father had committed suicide in 1903. He returned to Key West and drafted a farewell to arms, and possibly rewrote the ending 17 times. The book established Hemingway as a major American writer. In 1931 in Kansas City, Gregory was born and was Hemingway's last son. Two years later, Ernest and Pauline went on a 10-week safari to Kenya. Philip Percival was their guide. Percival had also taken Theodore Roosevelt on safari. Hemingway returned to Key West in 1934 and worked on the Green Hills of Africa. The book received mixed reviews when published. He bought a boat which he called Pillar. He derived the name from Pauline's nickname. Hemingway had a strong relationship with danger. The two were inseparable. He gladly accepted the opportunity to journal the Spanish Civil War. It was in Spain that he became better acquainted with journalist Martha Gellhorn. He wrote his only play, The Fifth Column, while Madrid was bombarded by Francoist forces. He was one of the last journalists to leave the Battle of Ebro and cross the river. In early 1939, Hemingway sailed to Havana in his boat. During the preceding year, he would divorce Pauline and wed Martha. It was Martha who inspired one of his most reputable novels, For Whom the Bell Tolls. He and Martha went to China in 1941. Legend says that in China, the Soviets recruited Hemingway under the name Agent Argo. He returned to Cuba and the Cuban government helped to refit Pillar. Hemingway wished to use Pillar to single-handedly ambush German submarines. May 1944 and Hemingway was in Europe and would remain in Europe until March 1945. In London he met Mary Welsh who was a correspondent for Time magazine. Martha was to join Hemingway in London. She would have travelled by plane except Hemingway refused to get her a press pass. She crossed the Atlantic on a ship of explosives and upon arrival accused Hemingway of being a bully and they divorced. He asked Mary Welsh to marry him on their third meeting. During the war, he was present at the Normandy landings but was not allowed ashore. In July, he became de facto leader of a village militia in Rambouillet. He was later commended with a bronze star. Following a period of illness and injury for the Hemingway family and the death of literary friends, Ernest and Mary went to Europe. They stayed in Venice for several months. Here, Hemingway fell in love, again, with 19-year-old Adriana Ivankich. She inspired the novel Across the River and Into the Trees, which he wrote in Cuba and the novel received negative reviews. He drafted The Old Man and the Sea, quid pro quo for the negative criticism. He wrote the draft in eight weeks and he said it was the best he could write ever. 1945 was his second trip to Africa. After two successive plane crashes, the press thought he and Mary were dead. The first plane had struck a utility pole. The second plane, taking them to Entebbe for medical care, had exploded on takeoff. Hemingway suffered a broken skull and leaky brain fluid. Later that year, he received a Nobel Prize for literature. Throughout his later life, he was a heavy drinker as he tried to combat the pain of his injuries. He was bedridden for a time between 1955 and 1956. Between 1957 and 1959, Hemingway revised his memoir, Unmovable Feast, and worked on many other literary projects. Hemingway endured a long bout of depression. He worried the FBI tracked his movements. His paranoia was ironic. The FBI actually had a file on him and an agent watched him during the 1950s. This was because he patrolled the Cuban waters for German subs during World War II. During late 1960 and early 1961, he underwent electroconvulsive therapy about 15 times. Myers quotes that he was released in ruins. On July 2nd, 1961, Hemingway shot himself with his favourite shotgun. Writers before Hemingway had elaborate writing styles. Hemingway approached writing by cutting the unnecessary. His sentences were sometimes short and simple, sometimes very long without commas. For example, here is a quote from The Old Man and the Sea. After that, he began to dream of the long yellow beach, and he saw the first of the lions come down onto it in the early dark, and then the other lions came, and he rested his chin on the wood of the bows where the ship lay anchored with the evening offshore breeze, and he waited to see if there would be more lions, and he was happy. 
I tried my best to capture Hemingway's style in the script. In doing so, I realised how difficult it is to write like somebody else. Ultimately, I struggled to overcome my personal style. Hemingway is to be admired for his bravery and his talent of expression, though as any human does, he had flaws. He would often exaggerate his tales of war to the point of legal trouble. He also had many love affairs, and Martha Gellhorn's accusation of Hemingway being a bully does not put Ernest in good light. Yet, his contribution to American literature is admirable, and he showed how a story can have a deeper meaning than what is apparent on the surface. I would like to finish with a quote from The Old Man in the Sea that has stuck with me since the first time I read it. I told the boy I was a strange old man, he said. Now is when I must prove it. The thousand times he had proved it meant nothing. Now he was proving it again. Each time was a new time and he never thought about the past.